Hello everyone and welcome to New Moon Acrylics. My name is Rhonda. Thank you all so much for being here. Today we're going to be working on Dutch pours. I've had a lot of people ask and request. I was going to do a live video but um, yeah I'm not there yet. Um, it's hard to notify you unless I do it in a video and then have it scheduled for a later but for now this is what we're going to do so anyway we're going to do dutch pours today and i'm going to show you everything from the consistencies of the paints to the blowouts and the layout of the paints so hopefully i can help you out a little bit and get you to understand better how to do a really cool dutch pour so yeah and in case you haven't noticed behind me the scenery has changed a little bit I have moved my camera set up um, from the other side of the room to this side of the room and one day I will show you a quick video tour of the studio and the layout that I have here it's not the greatest but it's it works so behind me these are all the paints that I use the mic is my cups I have more paints and stuff over here I've got canvases up there that need to be um, poured over. But anyway, yeah, so one day we'll get to doing all that. But for today, we're talking Dutch. Not literally. I don't know how to speak Dutch. But anyway, we're doing the Dutch pour. So are you all ready to start creating something new? I know I am. So let me get my hair up, apron on, and we'll get to creating something new. Alrighty, I'll see you in a minute. Alrighty, hello everyone. So yeah, we're gonna be doing the Dutch pour and the biggest thing on the Dutch pours is the consistency. So first let me show you the paints. I'm using Craft Smart Black for um, the base. And then for the actual blooms, I'm using Quinacridone Rose. And then I thought it would be really pretty to do a flesh tint. And these are all creative inspirations. And then we have a cadmium yellow red. And then a little bit of titanium white in there. So those are the colors that we're going to be working with. So first, I've already gotten the paints mixed up, but I have not checked the consistency. So that's what we're going to do now. I have added a little bit of water to all these. And these are pretty fluid. Now, when you're checking your consistency, you want to hold the, hold your stick or whatever you're using to stir with at an angle and a little bit above the cup. You don't want to hold it way up here because the gravity is just pulling it down in there and you're not going to get a good reading. You want to hold it kind of like this. Now, when you move it around like this, if you can see that little, um, I can't think of the word, oh my goodness. Um, you don't wanna see anything staying on the top. The trace, there you go. You don't wanna see a trace staying on the top. You want it to go right back down in the paint. So I already know that this is still a little bit on the thicker side. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. And you don't need to add a lot of water. You don't want to add a lot of water at a time because you can always put it in. You don't want to take it out and you really don't want to add a thickener or anything because that'll change the whole chemistry behind your paint. So like if you're adding different things that you want to get cells with. Okay, so that's the black. This is the quinacridone rose. And all of your colors are going to, depending on what color it is, some of them have a thicker density than others. So I'm just adding a little bit of water just to get the test. This drip test is my go-to to check to see if all my paints are the same consistency. As far as the thickness, I use the trace to see if it's the right consistency. 
and I do the drip test to see if they're all the same consistency. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about this um, as we're going, just feel free to drop it down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Okay, this is the yellow. And Creative Inspiration colors always dry just a little bit darker, especially the darker colors, like the phalo blue. Okay, now let me just check this white. And you do want these to be pretty fluid. You don't want there to be a trace on there. And I'll explain to you when we're doing the actual blowout. Okay. I think we're about good there. You want these to be kind of watery. You don't want them too watery, but you do want them to be a little watery. And this canvas that I'm using is an old canvas that I had poured on and I'd scraped and I just let it dry. So it still has some gesso on it. So let me just double check these. It's pretty warm in here today too, so. I don't have the uh, air conditioner on in my studio today because it's very noisy. If you've seen my previous videos and have seen, whoops. All right, let's check these to see if they are doing good here. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a little bit of your paint and you're just gonna drop it on here and make a little puddle. And what you wanna do is make sure you have the same size puddle for each color. So there's the black, the quinacridone rose, the flesh tint, the cadmium yellow red, and then the titanium white. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this around so you can see when I lift this up. Okay, so when you lift this up, you want all your paints to pretty much run at the same speed. And I can tell that my black is a lot thinner. The, the rose and the yellow are not as thin and these two are a little thicker. So that means I need to add a little bit of water to these two and a little bit more to these two. So the black is fine. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that one. And the main reason you want them to be all the same consistency is because if you have one heavier than the other, when you start putting the paint down, it's gonna start sinking into the other one because it's heavier. Okay, and then this one needed just a little bit. So we add just a little bit to this one. Just a little bit more. Okay, I don't know about y'all, but down here where I live in South Carolina, it has been pretty warm. And I don't know about you guys, but I am ready for fall. I would be so happy if it stayed between 70 and 80 degrees all year long. I'd be good with that. Okay, this is the yellow. And it was running about the same pace as the pink, so I added just a little bit water to it 
to get it to be about that consistency. Give it just a little more. Oops. Don't want to drip on anything. Let me get my paper towel here. Alrighty, and then just a little bit more to the titanium white. And then we'll do the test again and see how we did. Okay, so this time I'm just gonna lay the colors in here. This is just an old folder that I had, so it's all good. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white. And then we'll do the yellow. The flesh. Clonacodone rose. And then the black again, just to be on the safe side. Add the black. Alrighty. So let's check them out again. I know they're not even, but we'll still be able to see which ones flow quicker than the others. And we're still a little bit off. So I'm gonna fold this. Oops, that would be a quick, really quick uh, ink blot. Okay, so this is telling me my black is still thinner than the other ones. I still need to add a little bit of water. And I know this is time consuming, but when you're doing your painting, you wanna make sure you get it right. You don't wanna have your paints sinking into one another. So add a little bit more water to that. to this and there are some people that can uh, just stir the paint and they can tell the consistencies I would rather trust a scientific method if you want to call this a scientific method You put a lot of thought into what you're doing, especially when you're picking out your colors and you're getting your paints and you don't want to put them on the canvas and then have everything go muddy on you or have one color eating up another color. Okay. Alrighty, I think we got it this time. Okay, so I'm gonna put down the white. And I know my folder's probably a little bit on the wrinkly side, so things are gonna start moving, but when I pick it up, I'll be able to tell. And then we'll do this one. And I don't make them so that they run exactly all the same. You want them to be pretty daggone close. Okay, and now we'll get this black. Alrighty. All right, let's see what we got. The black is still a little bit thinner, but I, I knew that was gonna be, that's the base. But these four here are doing pretty daggum good. They're pretty close. So we're gonna call that good. I'll put my water to the side. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is check my sides and I know I want to paint this just a little bit so that it has an even black. When you're doing, hang on folks. When you're doing a Dutch pour, you want that 
um, because it is so thin, it doesn't really cover your sides very well. So I am just going to take some of my black right out of the jug here, squirt it on my table. Oh my goodness. And then I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna speed this up for you so you don't have to sit through it all. Here's the canvas and let's get the base down. Okay, wipe that off. You don't know how many times I have forgotten to wipe my knife off, my palette knife, and then I end up um, having to clean it later. So I'm just gonna tip this a little bit and get the paint to even out. All these paints are mixed with um, Floetrol and water, two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and water to consistency. Let me just bring this back. And I like using Floetrol because it is self-leveling. Everything will kind of level out. All right, now I'm gonna torch the bubbles out. Okay, now when you're laying your paints, that's the next step. Now you have your base down, you're gonna lay your paints for your Dutch pour. Now, if you see Dutch pours, and I don't have any in the studio right now. I don't think that I have done, I don't. But when you're laying your Dutch pours, if you notice the very edge of the blooms will have a certain color to them and they're usually all the same. What you wanna do is the first color you lay down is the color that's gonna be mainly on the outer edges of your bloom. So I want mine to be this quinacridone rose so next you want to think about your layout, how you want this to be. So I think I want it to be a little different. So, and you don't want to start right at the edge. You can. Actually, I can blow off the edge. So I'm going to go edge to edge or edge to up here. So I'm just going to go like this. And then... I'll add a little bit up here and just a little one right down here. All right, now I'm going to add the flesh tone. In the middle. Okay, and then I want this yellow to go on top of that. Don't want a lot, I just want a little bit of yellow. Oops, a little more than that. Okay. A little bit through here. All right, and then I'm gonna take this titanium dioxide titanium white. I'm still thinking soap, folks. I used to make soap and titanium was, dioxide was one that we used to make the, the soap white. Okay, so I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to drizzle it here and there. Okay. 
and get a little bit more on here. There we go. That's the drizzle I want. And a little bit through here. All right. Okay, so now when you're blowing, there's many different ways to blow. A lot of people use the hair dryers. I use the small mini travel hair dryer when I'm doing smaller pieces or if I want smaller blooms. If I'm doing a bigger piece, I'll use this bad boy right here. This is a Revlon. And what I do, depending on how big I want it, I'll tape the edge a little bit. So this is the one I use for the big ones. This little guy, and I know I've mentioned this in a video before, this is one of those little mini blowers. And this worked great for a little while until the little USB plug um, broke, but it'll still work on battery. And I'll show you right here in the middle. It'll blow some, it'll work pretty decent. So if you don't want to use a straw, you can use that. But for when I'm doing things like this, I'm going to use this. And you always want to put your hair dryer on cool, on low and on cool. If you put it on high, your paint's going to go all over the place. So you put it on low and most of them come with a little cool button. So you hold that cool button down because you don't want to heat the paint. You want it to stay kind of cool because you don't want to dry it out. So we're going to go ahead and start blowing this out. Now the way you hold your hair dryer is also a personal preference. Some people will hold it like this and blow the paint that way. And a lot of them, I like holding it upside down because you get to push the paint. Instead of pushing down and out, you're actually pushing out. So we're gonna go start here. and you direct where that paint is gonna flow, okay? So now we'll do the big one here. Have that go right off the edge. And then we'll do this one. And then we'll come back and do this one over here. Okay. So at this point, you can leave it like it is. You can add more to it. Um, I really, I'm gonna add a little bit of the peach right in here, cause that yellow is like really bright and I don't mind it, but I just wanna show you, if you just take a little bit and put it in there, you see what that looks like now. And then you go back over it How it adds it takes some of that pop from that yellow away and you can actually go in and just kind of finger paint with it if you want to that's what I'm gonna do on some of these edges some of these edges like this white right here ended up coming out really bold so I'm just gonna bring that down to the side like that and that way there it's not so bold and crisp and just come along here and do this one and 
you can do whatever you want to to your blooms once they're done you come along in here you make little swirlies And bring that back down here so you can add paint to it and make it spread out even more you can add more paint to it if you want the colors to um, like we did over here with the peach if you didn't want that to be so predominant in that one spot Let's see, I'll go over here and do this one. So I think you get the general idea. If you have any questions, just uh, let me know in the comments. And also don't forget, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Do, giving me a thumbs up also helps other people that are looking for this type of video. It helps them to be able to find it. It helps with the algorithm, the searches. Alrighty. So I think we're pretty good here. Let me give this a torch. So like I said, the key to a good Dutch pour is going to be your consistency. As you can see, none of the colors fell into one another. They all just kind of stayed where they wanted or where you put them. And that pink, like I said, I laid the pink down first and that's the color that comes out on the edge of your blooms, unless you messed it up like I did. I didn't mess it up. I just kind of tweaked it and played with it. So, Alrighty, let me bring you down. I don't know if I'm going to tweak with this anymore, but we'll see. But I'm going to bring you down and let you see the wet results. Alrighty, I'll see you in a second. Alrighty, everyone. Here are the wet results. And I did play with it a little bit more. Couldn't help myself. But anyway, so here are the wet results. As you can see, before I messed with it, you have that quinacridone rose that came out on the edge. See the quinacridone rose right here. And this is from me messing with it and blending stuff in. But when you do your blooms, the first color you lay down is going to be the primary color that comes out at the edge of your bloom. So we did get some cell reaction here. Which is pretty cool. Look at that. Look at that. That is so awesome sauce. I absolutely love this. I like playing finger painting sometimes, depending on the painting. But anyway, so yeah. So these are the wet results from my pour. And I will be back and I will show you the dry results. Alrighty, folks, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, everyone, here are the dry results from this painting. And I did kind of embellish it just a little bit, did some finger painting, but I think it came out pretty cool because of the way this one came out and the way that the embellishments worked. And my camera's being a little funky with the colors. That pink isn't, it is bright, but it ain't that bright. But anyway, I kind of love how this worked out. I'm going to call this one the dance. I showed a picture of it to a friend of mine and 
she said it looked like two somethings dancing so that's what I'm going to kind of call it the dance I think it came out pretty cool so anyway that's how you do a really weird blowout <laughs> not exactly the bloom the next video will show that but anyway I hope you all like this don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to see more so you know when the videos will be coming out and don't forget to hit that like button that way more people will be able to see these videos it's YouTube's way of getting us into the algorithm alrighty folks I hope you like this. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. And I can't wait to show you the next one. Alrighty, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.